Welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where today will be part two of our 2023 recap. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our thoughts and opinions are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions via our website at theworkingtoolspodcast.com. Today on the Working Tools Podcast, we have our usual four hosts. We have Worshipful Brother Stephen Chung from Prince Charles Number 153 in Kelowna, British Columbia. Worshipful Brother Jared Dunham from Penticton 147 in Penticton, British Columbia. Very Worshipful Brother David Colbeth from King Solomon Number 60 in Auburn, Washington. And I'm Matt Apple, and I'm a member of Mill Creek 243 here in Mount Lake Terrace, Washington. I forgot where my lodge meets. That's that's pretty low. <laughs> uh, whoa. It's, yeah. So... Uh, we're sort of continuing our conversation of what we we liked best and liked least of our our conversations uh, from last year. So I I will say the I think the I think actually I missed those episodes, so I didn't do the recordings, which is probably why they were my least favorite because I wasn't in them. But the uh, the episode that springs to mind that were I think it's not the episodes actually it was the topic of that irked me the most was the um the conversation around dress and lodge and uh that part of the, the the observing the craft book i like i said it wasn't the the conversation beyond the fact that i wasn't in it so all the points were silly but the that topic sometimes gets my goat and so i i rather than rehash that i will just sort of leave it at that yeah, how, Jared. How, how yeah, is, Jared. Oh, no, no, you can't throw that grenade out there and not expect to get the question. Oh, no, 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 no. How no, does no. that topic get your goat? I just, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so I know, I think pretty much specifically in the book, he says that people who say this are idiots, but I would rather have you in lodge than sitting at home thinking, gosh, I wish I owned a suit. And some of the, I mean, well, I actually took an issue with some of, in the book at least, some of the uh, uh, analogies that he uses about, he used about like the, I don't know how to pronounce the word, the the Civil War troops who dressed flamboyantly. Anyone know how to pronounce that? Zouaves. Those guys um, that were, they didn't do that to make themselves feel better about their military service. They felt, did that to impress upon the enemy or their the other troops that they were superior or they were more lethal or whatever it was. So that aside, I I'm I guess I sort of agree with him in that I think a lodge should have some degree of a standard, but I went and visited a lodge in Iowa a couple of weeks ago and I had a great time and everybody there was dressed more or less similarly and it was jeans and a collared shirt. And I had a great experience there. I, it was a it was a great lodge with great guys, and it was honestly one of the best Masonic meetings I've been to probably in the last few months. I I guess I'm not a stickler for dress as much as my family would believe I am. But <laughs> so there you go. That that was the topic that least resonated with me. I rather enjoyed that episode. I did, you know. I, I mean, <clears throat> do I do I think that we, uh, you know, should have a standard? Yes. Do I? I, I you know, for, for me, um, sometimes it irks me when I see guys, you know, they're, they're wearing their tuxedo, but they're wearing their black running shoes, right? Uh, you know, when you know that they've got proper dress shoes right that that kind of thing irks me but like you like you say i'd rather see a guy show up period um even if he doesn't own a suit right even though we tell them that that's part of the you know we, the, when they join you know do you have a dark suit because that's what you know, what's expected for proper dress but get, get him jerry the late, but to see the guys who've been around a while get lazy 
that I've got an issue with. That one irks me all the time, right? You know, and you know, then of course being forced to show up at a at a, a meeting wearing shorts and thongs and a t-shirt. Uh, flip flops. We flip like to flip 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 talk flip about wearing flip flops. Flip flops. Okay, flip flops. We were talking right? about not you getting know? in trouble earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you know, they just they they were just happy to see me there. And they they insisted I come whether I had, you know, a dark suit or not, right? That was very warm and welcoming too. So, you know, uh, there's several several aspects to that episode. So I really did enjoy that episode. the 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 view of uh, the chapter in the book, maybe not enjoy so much. Get him. Joe. All right. Wait, hold on okay, a Jerry. Let me do this. Let me do this. <sighs> <laughs> I actually... It's a little more abrupt. It's a little more abrupt. Like, <sighs> what? <sighs> I see Matt's point. I agree that dress. I think. I think for me. I think the point he was trying to put is the stretch. Is that we're always trying to. Um, I hate to use the word improve ourselves, but that that you know that. Um, I would hope that people going to lodge have and 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 we, you know the old term that your Sunday best that you're not just showing up in your everyday clothes because then you're in a sense in my mind you're disrespecting the lodge. But I, I agree that some some not everyone has the same opinion about getting dressed into a suit as I have, and that's fine. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. um, yeah, yeah I, I don't, know. uh, I can see, I can see Matt's point. I think that's all I really wanted to say is I see Matt's point. I wow. know it's, it's, <laughs> I, don't fall off your chair there, but I think, I think that there needs to be a stretch made so that there, there's a difference between so showing up in your, in your everyday clothes and showing up in something nicer than that because you want to show the respect you want to show your respect for lodge i feel at this point i should interject that when we started recording today i was wearing a demolay t-shirt and i saw <laughs> that everyone else was wearing their working tools podcast polos and so i had to go change in order to conform with the group so <laughs> well I'll, you, I'll admit on air that mine's just a black shirt not my not the working uh, tools. Uh, but well, in that case never mind <laughs> so, one of us one yeah of i mean i guess i don't uh, we're rehashing, but the the I don't disagree with the idea of trying to do something special and make the lodge experience a special experience. I guess I just don't see going all the way to white tie and tails. That's just a oh dear God, no! That's Grand Lodge. <laughs> reach too far. That's for, for Grand Lodge officers. Yeah. Yeah, well, but, uh, go ahead, David. Uh, you mentioned Aaron. I got the side. I got the Jared side almost. Uh, <laughs> When you mentioned you had a good time in Iowa, Iowa, was it Iowa? Yeah, he's nodding. Uh, when, when we had a good time in Iowa, I could see having a good time with guys that you aren't familiar with, and they're just maybe hanging out at the lodge or practicing or something. But when I see lodges that do work in jeans and t-shirt or jeans and polo shirts, or God forbid, literally flip flops and shorts and shirts, I think, what are they doing? There, there's in I don't feel even if they do quality ritual, I don't believe that you can really be ceremonial in that in that uh, dress. I, I just it just drives me crazy. And I'll it'd be different if there was a guy or two that couldn't afford or couldn't that'd be different. And he had to come in jeans or had to come in. A, but you can go to the thrift. I mean, I've told this many times in the show. I've gone to the thrift stores and bought my you know suits and stuff. So. And there was just, I don't think they all listened to the show, so we're probably okay talking a little bit. I'm not going to deliver names, but there was a brother that heard of another brother that needed a black suit for his installation. And they're from a different lodge, but he and I are good friends. And he said, hey, is there any, you, you know, would you be willing to donate? And I said, yeah, not only me, but I've got 15 guys in my lodge that I know will donate in a heartbeat. And so I didn't say, hey, can everybody donate 100 bucks? I said, hey, can you put in 20 bucks? And within... An hour or two, we had like three or four hundred dollars 
to help this guy out to get a suit, a black suit for his installation so he could be installed as an officer in a black suit. So that, to me, when, when we talk about charity, that more of philanthropy, of course, but that's a giving of masonry and something that we should be doing or want to do to help our brothers. And if a guy can't afford a suit, let's help him get one, whether it's a thrift store one or whether it's a one off the rack. But I don't agree with a guy that can't plan ahead and be in proper attire for an event. Yeah, because you can always bring it in a suit. If you're bringing your suit to work with you so that you can show up to lodge, you can bring your shoes in a bag, right? And, you know, that's just poor planning. And I, I give um, a guy a break if I think maybe he's got a foot problem. Maybe there's something going on and he's... You know. <clears throat> For sure. But when it becomes a repetitive thing, then that's, you know, that's sheer laziness, right? So um, be careful in a couple of years because our junior, now our deputy grandmaster wears tennis shoes a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. right well you know I, and and when you go to different jurisdictions it, it, you know that's that's the unknown right like we we did a, a visit uh we went to uh visit a lodge where there was a, a district deputy grandmaster's official visit and uh the he the the the, the that district deputy showed up in jeans and a t-shirt and a cowboy hat and cowboy boots and we were there in tuxedos right and going man we feel overdressed right so that's the, the that was the first time i learned well not every lodge has this uh sunday best theory right and uh which was really strange it it, it really was a strange feeling uh that that they weren't even in dark suits right you know so um yeah so not to be mr grumpy pants here or anything but we shouldn't be discussing dress in lodge we should be discussing the recap right so, <laughs> <laughs> but so, so that that was what stuck out to me as something i mean again not that i hated the episodes or anything but whatever it wasn't my favorite is there something that you guys had that was that was stuck out as something of which you wish were different I, I well, oh sorry stay good no you go ahead david i i if we want it was keeping on the same theme the one i chose that i didn't necessarily agree with or wasn't my favorite at least was the uh, chapter in where they were traveling number five closed corporation uh the, the if, correct me if i'm wrong but my understanding of that was that there's an emphasis on had been an emphasis on many many members and that really should be more of a focus group and i think in our conversations we talked about or i think we i think we discussed that 150 members is kind of this magical number and some some philosophical ideas that have uh, psychological studies have been done that 150 members you can you can kind of connect with 150 people and then but 50 of those is really who you are closer to and then like 10 or 15 of them was your really close friends and so uh that was the one that i thought i didn't agree with too much only because our current state, at least in Washington, and what I've been hearing from your folks up the north, is that we could use a few more members. Not we're not trying to get anybody, but I think he was talking about there that uh, they were in their jurisdiction. They were uh, eliminating five percent or ten percent of members, and there was another one that was doing like twenty percent or something. It was pretty pretty different numbers on their elimination process where I don't think we've eliminated anybody, but I think it is attributed to our six step program and our introductory program and getting to know the guys and those that aren't interested kind of weed themselves out. Uh, but I, th I think we could, we could do with a few more members. Doesn't need to be a thousand, but you know, another 25 or 50 would be great. I've, uh, so this is going to be off topic. I just said we should get back on topic, and I'm going to drag us off topic. But the uh, I went and visited a lodge in Pennsylvania years and years ago, and uh, they were merging with another lodge because both lodges were down under, I think it was 400 members. They were both under 400 members, and so they were concerned about size, so they were merging to, to get their size back up. And I was like, 400? You know, I, at the time, we didn't even have 100 in my lodge, so it was just, it was crazy. Yeah. The, the, but, my favorite show 
was out of the yeah, you know, whether the traveling series with the number chapter nine, bread or stone, what are we truly giving to our new masons? That was that was the one I considered my favorite show. Because what are we? I, I've said before that when I joined masonry, I had an expectation of something that didn't materialize, and so then that became an expectation. And so I think we all could do a better job. Some do it better than others. Some don't do it at all. <laughs> of of feeding our masons, our new members, and those that are inquiring. And if they, if the inquirers or seekers, as you say, find what they think they're looking for in the introduction, then they'll petition and continue on. And you don't have to worry about begging people to come in. Those that want to be part of what you're doing and already doing will continue, I think. Yeah, we uh, actually just open the rest of the book uh, from the Cornerstone project that Ken Overy was talking about. And there's actual decent content to give each at, at, at each degree level um, educational material, if you will, uh, to the candidates as they come through. And <clears throat> now that we've opened the rest of the, the folders, we also found there was some instructional uh, uh quality content for the existing membership on how to do that and how to bring in a uh, uh, good, or, uh, uh, I guess, what to do with the, the new members as they're coming through. And so all of that kind of stuff are, we're implementing now in our lodge. Um, I mean, yeah, we did the six step program for a number of years, but didn't open that other file. Right. And now, uh, that the cornerstone project has come out. They send a, they send us these files, and it was like, okay, there's some good quality content because you know sometimes you know we didn't know what to give them, you know what what's appropriate to give uh, the new guys as they're coming through. I always just if they were looking for education, I I would say Ashler College or or something like that, right? But there was actually a whole bunch of quality content to give, so you know. I know it's off topic still, but the other one I liked was uh, chapter four where they're traveling the pearl of great price. Is it too easy or too cheap? And I guess I missed or didn't remember that we had read or talked about that in the opening dialogue, he, he relates a story about a printer painter, a printer painter, a apprentice painter. <laughs> yeah. Careful. <laughs> Put your P's and T's in the right place. <laughs> Uh, an apprentice painter that wanted to join masonry and the dues were $20, but he was only making $10 a week. And so it took him two weeks to become a Mason two weeks salary. And so I thought, well, I want math, you know, here in Washington, it's going to be $16 an hour pretty soon. So 16 bucks times 40 is 600 bucks ish. And so it'd be $1,200 over $1,200 for a guy to join masonry now. And I don't know any lodge in our jurisdiction that's charging $1,200 for the membership and so yeah I, I, or a little on dues of any kind so I, I we certainly have changed the value he was talking about how in was it is it pennsylvania where he's from i forget now it was 20 mm -hmm. bucks for a long long time and they've raised it significantly to the total sum of 30 dollars uh, yeah i know we just raised ours to 500 for the initiate uh, for the initiation piece Right. And nobody even squawked. Right. And now, and now we talk when we had one guy, and it was a little off topic, but we talked about raising our dues. And the, the whole conversation ended when somebody else stood up and asked him how much he paid for his last golf game. Right. So well, yeah, nobody would argue about. Nobody would argue about do or about initiation fees because they're all been through it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was going to say the exact same thing. We've, I've already paid my initiation fees, <laughs> right? But value, value for what for what we do, right? Um, that was the topic of that that episode, and um, I think that uh, we definitely do undervalue ourselves in in the uh, eyes of the seeker. They, I mean, they have enough desire to want to join in the first place if they're approaching us, but <clears throat> um, perceived value, yeah. I don't, I, okay, yeah, we're really going to go off topic here now. 
I don't sometimes I don't think that we undervalue ourselves. I think sometimes that we just don't provide the value right off the start. That's the difference that, that you can charge twelve hundred dollars a year as long as you're making sure that they're getting a twelve hundred dollar a year experience. And I think I think that's more part part of yeah part of what that that part of this of the paper was more of a gate. It was it was the a, a gatekeeping type thing of you know it used to cost it was it was a significant amount of money and people really thought about joining Freemasonry because it, uh, because of that and when you get when you lower the cost of joining you get anyone and anyone is what you get true uh, that that's uh leads me to one of the other ones that i i rather enjoyed in the wither we traveling series was asleep at the west gate right not guarding our west gate that that episode was to me an important one um and hopefully more hopefully a lot of lodge guys active guys read uh, listen to that um because i think it was good content um doing a good job at, at guarding the west gate is important and part of that is properly informing the seekers as to what's expected and um so that the they come in eyes eyes more wide open Right. I've been I've been trying to think of topics for our shrink the lodge here for next year, and <clears throat> uh, I, I think uh, those that listen to the show will already shrink know. the lodge. Why you want to shrink the lodge? Oh, we've talked about our shrink the lodge, haven't we? Yeah, but our uh, maybe you know people listening are going, what? Why you want to shrink the lodge? So, in very short order, our shrink the lodge is a educational education. Ed- segment inside of our lodge meeting so we open lodge and in our case we go immediately off off session or to refreshment so we can move for the canadian folks so they don't get offended uh, we go to refreshment and then because uh, <laughs> we, we tried to do that at grandma sonic day and all the guys were confused i don't remember i, I apologize sorry i don't remember the instructor's name john i think it was john something or other and he was trying to get all the guys at grandma sonic day to to come up to the east and sit around the and they all were like, what are we doing? I don't understand. This is weird. And I was like, oh, he's doing shrink the lodge. And so I, you know, was moving chairs and getting everybody. <laughs> and there, it was so funny to watch the stiff brothers from the north <laughs> that didn't want to get in and uh, cuddle up to each other, basically, and have a conversation about masonry. But so that's what we do. We get in, we've been doing it lately in, in the north side because the older fo- older masons have been sitting over there and so they don't have to walk across the room and all that. But anyway, we get together. It's all on the level. We form a circle-ish. Masons can't seem to form an exact circle, but a circle-ish. No second rows is the main thing. Nobody sits behind anybody. So you can kind of see everybody. We have a conversation about things. And sometimes they're a little more heavy and sometimes they're not. And so I thought, oh, these might be some interesting. Because he he provides a little story in the beginning of the Whether We're Traveling about what he's about to talk about usually. And so I thought, oh, I can steal those stories and just say, a Mason I know related to this, or a Pascal Master I know related to this story. And then we could have something to talk about, and it's not too heavy, and you can get the opinions of the other Masons in the room. And uh, I think I think that may be what I'll implement for the Shrink the Lodge sessions this year, is just to have these conversations. And basically, I have a large group casual conversation about Masonry. And it's been really fun. We've had some really great engagement, and especially from some Masons I wouldn't have expected. And it's difficult for some of us to keep our mouth shut to let them talk, but uh, we try desperately. <laughs> Lessons in in uh, learning when not to speak. Yes, yes. Well, I, uh, in in that, I know we're getting kind of close here to our thirty minute window or so, but I, I do want to take just a second and say thank you to our listeners and uh, all those that have been watching and listening, and of course out on podcast land and uh that don't see us it's although you can see us on spotify if you want to go to spotify we do upload the videos to spotify so you can see those so if you're listening on apple podcast or some other non-video podcast what was that man and youtube Uh, yes you can see on youtube or spotify and uh you can so you can watch there's there's a lot of animation that happens and a lot of head laughing and head nodding and laughing and stuff that we see on the videos uh the nice thing the only reason i emphasize spotify (laughs) is because you can continue to listen 
even though it's closed, even though the app's closed and we're on YouTube, you know, they, unless you're paying for premium, uh, you have to keep the app open and have to sit in front of it and watch it. But uh, so Spotify is kind of a nice way to to listen to it and uh, catch catch up on things. But we really do appreciate everybody out there and and uh, encourage you to subscribe and to follow us. Whether that does anything for you necessarily, of course, it'll notify you of shows and things, but it certainly helps to uh, popularize the show and uh, let other people know about it. So we thank you. Right. And really want to thank those ones that are following some of those uh, uh, places that do the rankings because, you know, we did manage to get ranked number five on one of those, which was pretty cool. Uh, that uh, tells us that we're, we're uh, appreciated. And, uh, we like that. So, um, the, uh, uh, yes, uh, comments on our YouTube page on, on all of the podcast apps to our Gmail. Uh, and yeah, I do believe we, uh, we have things like Patreon and whatnot still. Um, so any of the support and, uh, again, reach out if there's, uh, uh something you want to connect on us with or connect with us on um and thanks Jared anything to add that looks like a no no you guys okay. pretty much covered it <laughs> <laughs> I agree I think they covered it I will just say thank you all for listening and on behalf of uh David and Stephen and, and Jared and myself we wish you all a uh, happy New Year, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. I think I've said this before, but our intent is for the new year to start doing a, a series of shorter conversations about uh, short talk bulletins. So we'll be putting out what short talk bulletin is we were talking about, and we'll have a link in those show notes to the audio file, if there is one, of the short talk bulletin so you can listen to it yourself and hear what it's going to be about. Um yeah, so with that, we, we again, we thank you all for listening and we solicit your comments and we look forward to talking to you again soon on the Working Tools Podcast. Goodbye. Goodbye.